Hi, and welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Haley Houseman from Long Creek and Dalton City United Methodist Churches. Thank you so much in joining and worshiping with us today. We'll begin with our call to worship, which comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 5 today. If you'd like to turn there with me or just listen in. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your rans ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Our opening prayer today comes from our book of worship, number 459, if you'll join me in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you created us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Grant to us such piety of heart and strength of purpose that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will and no weakness from doing it. In your light may we see life clearly and in your service find perfect freedom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our New Testament reading today comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. This is why I am suffering as I am, yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you have heard from me, keep us the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you want to join me in saying the Apostles' Creed or feel free just to listen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Stay tuned for our children's sermon this morning. Hey friends, it's Pastor Haley. I'm checking in with you today with my guitar. I know that some of you play instruments, especially you older girls play some instruments like the trombone or the saxophone or maybe the clarinet or the flute. That's what I played when I was in marching band in junior high and high school. Um, and I know that you all are also learning to play instruments. I know some of you younger ones also may not know how to play instruments just yet, um, but I know that you like to sing and dance and maybe use your hands to make a noise or snap your fingers or whistle a little bit or just sing, to sing songs to the Lord. Um, and so I encourage you to do that. But I have my guitar. I've been um, practicing a little bit. So let's see, I'll play a few notes or a few chords. How about that? Uh-oh, <laughs> that 
that did not sound very good at all, did it? I need to keep practicing. This morning in our Bible reading, we are going to hear about this story where there were some instruments, some harps and lyres and flutes and zithers and some other things that were playing. And whenever these instruments would play, the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, which is kind of a fun word to say, if you want to say that one with me, Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar made this order that any time all these instruments would play, the people were supposed to bow down and worship this big statue that was made that was 90 feet tall and nine feet wide. It was this big statue that was gold and it looked like King Nebuchadnezzar. Well, he made this rule that everyone had to bow down and worship it. Whenever they heard the music, they were supposed to bow down and worship this statue. Well, you might remember last week we talked about Daniel in the lion's den. And Daniel had three friends named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which those are kind of some fun names too. So we'll kind of shorten them for now for to Shadrach and Benny. So Shadrach and Benny we're not gonna bow down and worship this statue. Even when the music played, even when everyone else was bowing down to worship the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar, they said, no, we are not gonna do that. We are only gonna worship the Lord our God. And that's what they did. Even when Nebuchadnezzar got really angry and was like, I'm gonna hurt you, I'm gonna kill you, they still put their faith in God and trusted in God that God would protect them and watch over them. And so they trusted in the Lord and they worshiped the Lord only. We can learn from their example um, that we too should worship the Lord only. The Bible tells us not to bow down and worship anything besides the Lord, um, to not make idols that are made in um, the image of human beings or of other things but that the Lord is the one who is worthy of our praise, that the God who created us is the one that we should worship and bow down and give the praise and honor and glory to. So as you play your instruments, whether they are on key or off key or a right note or a wrong note, as you play your instruments or sing to the Lord or make noise with your hands or snap your fingers, may your worship Go heavenward to the Lord. May you fix your eyes on him and worship him alone always. Will you pray with me? God, we give you thanks for who you are. Help us, God, to continue to grow in your love and in your grace. May we fix our eyes on you and worship you alone, Lord, for you are the one who is worthy of all of our praise. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We'll now enter into a time of prayer. As has been in past weeks, if there's something in particular that you would like prayer for, please let me know. I'd be glad to pray with you um, about whatever is happening in your life or in the life of someone that you love. But if you'll join me in prayer today. God, we give you thanks for this day for life and for breath and for your presence that is with us, even as we have to continue to be apart from our church family and others in our community and in our world. We thank you, Lord, that you are always with us, that we don't have to distance ourselves from you. Lord, we give you thanks for this day and for all the things that you are doing in each of our lives and in our world. Lord, we just continue to pray for your peace to rule and to reign in our hearts and in our land. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to be with those who are suffering from injustice. Lord, we pray that you would bring justice in the way that only you can. Lord, we continue to pray for those who are suffering from this virus. Lord, we pray for healing and a miracle in the way that only you can and will provide. Lord, we continue to pray for our loved ones that we are having to distance from. God, we continue to lift up those in the nursing home or who are at home by themselves. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to watch over them and remind them of your love for them. God, we ask that you would continue to be with those who are caring for them as well at this time. God, give them strength and give us strength as we continue to try to do what is safest and healthiest for all of us, Lord. God, we ask you would just be with us as Long Creek goes back to worship this week. 
God, we know that your presence will be there and we give you thanks, Lord, for bringing us back together. Lord, I lift up all of those who are watching this morning as well, who aren't gathering together just yet or not able to gather together at this time. God, continue to remind all of us of your love and of your grace and of your peace that you have for each one of us. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us and for calling us yours. Thank you, God, for being our good, good heavenly parent who loves us so much, so much more than any of us can ever imagine. We give you thanks, Lord, for who you are and for all that you do. And we take time this morning or today as well to pray for the things that are on our own hearts in this moment. God, thank you for hearing our prayers and for answering them in your way and in your timing. Help all of us to have ears that hear and hands and feet that respond in obedience to whatever it is that you are calling us to do. And we join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Now you all may have guessed where this hero series was headed. I cannot be someone from Metropolis and not talk about Superman, my hometown hero. Um, I am from Metropolis, Illinois, and it is a real place. If Illinois is a, if this is the map of Illinois, it is not up here. It is all the way down at the tip, next to the Ohio River, across from Paducah, Kentucky. I'm like at the very, very tippy top, southern end of the state right across from Kentucky, which is part of why I have this accent that you all um, can hear. So anyway, talking about Metropolis and Superman. I grew up there on Metropolis Street. My great grandmother lived on Lois Lane. Yes, these things are real. And our local newspaper is known as The Planet. It's Metropolis, what can I say? We even have a Superman museum there and we also have a big statue in the middle of town. Now the original statue looked like this. He was pretty cheesy, right? Now the statue looks more like this. Looks a whole lot better, right? There are even a few bricks around the bottom where you might find a name or two that you recognize. Mine. Yes, right there next to our courthouse is a 15 foot tall bronze statue of Superman. Now it doesn't look bronze because it's painted in proper Superman colors, yellow, red, and blue. So, but it is a 15 foot tall bronze statue. He's pretty tall, but now, in the Bible, there is a story about a statue that is even taller than this bronze one that stands in my hometown. This one that we'll read about this morning is 90 feet tall and nine feet wide. It is a huge golden statue of King Nebuchadnezzar that he has built for people to bow down and to worship. So this is one big dude that people are bowing down and worshiping and it's a statue, it's an idol, it is not God that they are bowing down and worshiping to. Last week we read in Daniel chapter six about Daniel in the lion's den. This week we're turning back a few chapters to a similar story about Daniel's three friends who are thrown into the fiery furnace. Now, if you have not seen the VeggieTales version of this, I highly encourage you to go watch it. Rack, Shack, and Benny, and the story of um, the bunny. So go watch it go have a little fun with that if you haven't seen it it's very cute and fun to watch especially if you have kids so anyway go watch it and have some fun last week 
We talked about Daniel's faith and his trust in God as he was thrown into the lion's den and about how God was able to save him and close the mouth of the lions and Daniel came out without even a scratch on him. This week we take a look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being thrown into the fiery furnace because they wouldn't bow down and worship this ginormous statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has built. So turn with me to Daniel chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide, or that's about 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide, and set it up on the plain of Dur in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So there are a whole lot of important people there. So. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of the gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and people of every language fell down and worshiped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold and that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, King Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown into a fiery furnace. Then when God will then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you on this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trouser, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and these three men firmly tied, no, that's not how it goes, okay, so. 
The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair on their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. The Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, I don't necessarily recommend following the end of this where King Nebuchadnezzar cuts up people into pieces, but I do recommend following the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Last week, we talked about Daniel and his faith and his courage as he faced those lions, as he stood up for his faith in God, as he stood up for the fact that people should not be um, bowing down and worshiping the king or praying to anyone besides the Lord our God. Daniel had faith and courage. This week, we take a look at his friends and about how they too had great faith and courage, and they trusted that God would save them. And even if he didn't, that they would still bow down and praise him alone. Our passage this week is about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or we'll lovingly call them for today, Shaq, Rack, and Benny. Now, these three were great men of faith, and they had faith in God. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar made that golden image that people were supposed to bow down and worship every time the music of all kinds played. People were supposed to bow down and worship. Well, Shaq, Rack, and Benny were not going to do that. That was not part of their faith. That um, They were not going to worship something besides God. And they stood strong in their faith. Now, of course, there are some tattletale people, some people who don't like that they are not worshiping as King Nebuchadnezzar as they're supposed to. So they tattletale to the king. And long before the fiery furnace is heated up, King Nebuchadnezzar's anger heats up. He gets in a rage and he has this conversation. We won't even call it a conversation. He kind of yells at them and is like, um, why are you not bowing down and worshiping me and this golden idol that I have built for myself? Um, but Shaq, Rack, and Benny, they stand up for God. They stand up for their faith. Um, and they say, no, we are not going to worship you. We're going to bow down and worship the Lord only. And that's what they did. King Nebuchadnezzar was very hot and angry, though, and he would not have it. Before things get heated up in the fiery furnace, King Nebuchadnezzar's anger gets heated up pretty quickly. It can be a point for us to pause and do a self-check for us as well, thinking about our own anger and what happens when we don't get our own way. How do we respond? Are we able to kind of keep our, um, keep our temper kind of even and killed, or do we kind of flare up and get into this blaze inside ourselves or even have an outburst ourselves? 
So how do we respond when things don't go our way? How do we respond when people don't agree with us? We cannot control other people's responses or their actions, but the thing that we can control is our own. So how do we respond when we get angry? How do we respond when things don't go our way? Are we still able to kind of keep our cool enough to behave in a Christ-like or God-like way? Are we able to respond in a way that is healthy and not harmful? King Nebuchadnezzar definitely responded in a way that was not healthy. It was harmful. King Nebuchadnezzar got so angry that he wanted to have these three men killed in a fiery furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar asked Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that who is even going to be able to save them? What kind of God is going to be able to save them even from his hand in this fiery furnace? Well, King Nebuchadnezzar had no idea who he was dealing with. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, were men. They were ordinary men, but they had faith in an extraordinary God. They had faith that God was going to be able to save them out of this fiery furnace. And even if he did not, even if God did not save them from this fiery furnace, they were still going to bow down and worship him and not bow down and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's idol or any other idol for that fact. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have faith in God, and they put their trust in God, and they will praise him even if, even if they're going to their death, they're still going to worship God and serve him only. Reading back here in Daniel chapter 3, it says in verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. King Nebuchadnezzar has no idea what is about to happen here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego trust in God. They say that even if we are thrown into this fiery furnace, we know that our God will save us. And even if he does not, we are not going to bow down and worship your image of gold. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are willing to take the risk that instead of um, giving in to the fear that King Nebuchadnezzar is trying to thrust upon them, the fear of death, um, they are not going to bow down to it. They are not going to bow down to him. Instead, they are going to have faith that is bigger than their fear. They are going to put their trust in God. And that is exactly what they do. They live out their faith through trusting in God. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar isn't hearing what they have to say, and he has them ordered to be thrown into the fiery furnace but not only are they going to be thrown into a regular fiery furnace, he orders that this furnace is um, heated up seven times hotter, like kind of signifying how much hotter he is in his anger. Heat that thing up seven times hotter and throw them in there. The furnace gets so hot that the soldiers taking them up there or wherever to be thrown into it are killed on the way. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego go into this fiery furnace that is seven times hotter than a usual furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar is watching and his eyes are about to be opened. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so one, two, three of them go into the furnace. But as King Nebuchadnezzar is watching, he sees that they are not three people in this furnace. There happens to be a number four. Now, some scholars say that this number four is an angel of the Lord. Others think that it is like a, others think that it is a pre-incarnate version of Jesus. That is Jesus who is there with them in the furnace. Either way, if it's an angel or if it's Jesus in there with them, either way, God is there present with them, watching over them and protecting them. That is the power of God. He is our defender and able to protect us even from the hottest of hot of things. God is able to be present with them and save them. And not only does God save them, but God is present with them 
Emmanuel, God with us. God was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And Emmanuel, God is with us here and now today. Whenever we are going through the things that we are going through in our lives as well, God promises to never leave us nor forsake us. He did not leave or forsake Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego or Daniel in the lion's den. And God has not left us or forsaken us as we are here going through the things that we have been going through in the last four months or so or going through the things that we've been going through in our lives um, in the last year or days or months or like the whole life of our, uh, all of our life. God has not left us or forsaken us. Emmanuel, God is still with us. So King Nebuchadnezzar's eyes are opened. He says, look, um, weren't there three people put in this furnace? Um, I see a number four. And he says, not only is it a number four, like man looking person, he says, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and un." harmed and the fourth looks like the son or a son of the gods <laughs> king nebuchadnezzar goes to the furnace opening himself he has to go and see this thing he calls out to the men and they answer him they are not dead they are very much alive and not only are they alive not even a hair on their head is singed their clothes are not scorched. And even more than that, they don't even smell like smoke. Now, I don't know about you, but before smoking laws went into place and you would go to a bowling alley or to a restaurant, you would leave smelling like smoke. Or if you go and you try to burn leaves, you're gonna end up smelling like smoke. These guys were thrown literally into a pit of death and they come out not even smelling like smoke. That is the power of our God. God is the hero of this story and God is the hero of all of our life stories. God is able. God is able to do so much above and beyond what we can believe or imagine. May we put our faith and our hope and our trust in him just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did all those years ago when they were faced with the fiery furnace. Thinking about our own lives, when the going gets tough, where do we turn? Who do we turn to? Where do we put our hope and our trust? Is it in God or is it in something else? As followers of Jesus, we should stand for truth, justice, and God's way. Not just some days, but every day of our lives. We should um, put our trust and our hope and our faith in Jesus and in God as he leads us and the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit empowers us. When the going gets tough in our life, on the day-to-day -day grind, what do we stand for? Who do we stand for? Does our faith withstand the heat of the fire? We may never be literally placed in a fiery furnace, but there are things in our lives that um, may not be the desired place where we want to be, or we may be put in some tough situations and our faith tested. And who do we trust when we are in those moments? Who do we put our faith in? What are we trusting in? Is it God? Is it ourself? Is it something else? Does our faith withstand the heat of the fire. Will we praise God even if, even if our prayers aren't answered in the way that we hoped? Will we trust God even if um, our loved one isn't healed of a terrible disease? Will we praise God even when or if our dreams are dashed and our hopes are deferred? Will we trust God and praise God even then? Bart Millard is the lead singer of Mercy Me, and you might remember them from the song I Can Only Imagine. Well, Bart tells this story about how the song Even If came about. It came from a place of him and his family struggling um, with the fact that his son has type 1 di diabetes, 
and God has not healed him in a way that um, that we would hope or imagine. You know, um, God has not brought about healing in the way um, that we might expect or want. But this song comes from a place of having to have faith in God and trust in God, even when things aren't going the way that we had hoped or imagined. The song, Even If, also comes, of course, from this line from Daniel 3, where the three men say that we are going to praise God even if, even if he doesn't do the things that we had hoped or imagined, even if he doesn't save us from this fiery furnace, even if we are still going to praise him. Hear these words from Even If by Mercy Me. They say sometimes you win some and sometimes you lose. And right now, right now, I'm losing bad. I sit on this stage night after night, reminding the broken that it'll be all right. But right now, right now, I just can't see. It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down. But what will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? I know you're able and I know you're good. You can save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. They say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Well, good thing a little faith is all I have right now. But God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, give me the strength to be able to sing. It is well with my soul. I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt will all go away if you just say the word. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. You've been faithful. You've been good. All of my days, Jesus, I will cling to you. Come what may, because I know you're able. I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt would all go away if you just say the word. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. You may never have your life threatened to be thrown into a fiery furnace because of your faith. But when things heat up, who do you turn to? When your faith is tested, does your foundation stay strong? Do you continue to put your faith and your hope and your trust in God, even when your eyes can't see it? Do you trust God with every moment of your day, of your life? Do you trust God with your loved ones? Do you praise God even if? Do you praise God even when? In recent years, I went through one of the toughest, hardest seasons of my life. One where there was a whole lot of letting go of things that I did not want to let go of. My hopes um, were deferred and my dreams were dashed in some ways. Um, it was hard. It was a very hard season. But here I am. I survived it. I didn't survive it alone. God never left me nor forsaked me. Um, God was still present with me, even when things got very, very hard and tough. Even when my eyes couldn't see what was going to be up ahead. I had many doors that seemed to be wide open, slammed shut. Um, there were many things that I had hoped would happen, did not happen. Um, but God was still present. And through that season, I kept hearing this question that kept bubbling to the surface. I felt like it was this question from God. Do you trust me? Haley, do you trust me? I wanna ask you this morning that question, not coming from me, 
but coming from God. Do you trust me? Do you trust God with your whole being? If things are really, really hard and tough right now, keep hanging on. It will be okay. God is still present with you in the middle of whatever it is that is happening. God has not left you and he won't leave you. He is Emmanuel, God with us. You can trust in him. You can keep the faith. You can hang on tightly to him. You can cling to the hem of his garment. He is still present. He hears your prayers and he hears your cries. You can trust in him. Keep the faith. All of us have been going through a very hard season and it's been hard in different ways and for different reasons for all of us. We have been in the same ocean, but we are not all in the same boat. Um, your circumstance may be different than mine, but know that God has not left us. God is still good and we can still trust God. He is still present. He has not left the building or we have left the building, but God has not left us. Um, God is still with us. Have you trusted God as you have been on this journey in uncharted territory? Do you trust God? Do we trust God on a day-to-day -day basis? Do we praise God, even when we're not able to sing and when we gather together? Do we praise God even with, when our prayers are not answered in the way that we had hoped or expected? Do we trust God even when things don't look the way that we want them to look? Do we trust God even if? Do we praise God even when? Do we, like the three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were thrown into the fiery furnace, do we trust God with that kind of faith? Do, believe, do we believe that God is able, even when our eyes may not see it yet? Do we believe that God is able to do um, things that we cannot even imagine? Do we believe that our God is bigger than our circumstances? We, like the three friends in the fiery furnace, believe that God is able. Do we believe that even if things don't go our way, that God is able to bring something good out of it? Do we still believe that God is good even when things don't go our way? If you can't see it today, know that God is still good and God is still trustworthy that he is with you in whatever you're going through, that you can trust in him. And may we do that today, even when our eyes can't see. Let's pray. God, help us to have faith like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Help us to remember, Lord, that you are with us, even when our eyes cannot see it. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that never leaves us. Thank you, Lord, for never forsaking us. Thank you, Lord, for your great love for each and every one of us. We thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for being Emmanuel, God, with us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that empowers us. May we, God, fix our eyes on you and worship you alone. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, who is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. If you would like to extend your worship today, you can do so through giving your tithes and offerings. You can send in your offering to either of the churches, or you can send a check to Lenny or Carol. You can also give online through the Illinois Great Reverse Conference website. A couple of bits of information. Long Creek has returned to in-person gatherings. We're meeting on Sunday mornings at nine o'clock in the fellowship hall. If you would like to join us, Dalton City, UMC, we're continuing to worship online at this point in time. Stay tuned for more information about when we might return to worship in the future. And also, I will continue meeting all of you here online for worship on Sunday mornings. Um, so join me here if you can't make it in person. Both Long Creek and Dalton City are doing take-home packets for Vacation Bible School this summer. If you would like one for your kids or grandkids or your neighbors or yourself or some friends, 
let me know. You can also send a message through Facebook or leave a, an actual phone message at either of the churches and we'll get that and get your packets to you in July. We look forward to continuing to connect with our kiddos um, through the summer um, take home vacation Bible school. May Jesus be the superhero of your story. Thank you so much for joining in worship today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace and his love. God bless y'all and have a great week.